Hello, and welcome to another video, guys, gals, subscribers. Let me, uh, let me see if I can change my view here just a little bit. Um, I am now solely recording um, my videos through my phone. I have uh, changed my business just a little bit. As everyone knows, I am no longer open to the public. I am strictly warranty repair. Um, I got too much going on with other things that uh, I just have to, I have to slow down to provide time for my wonderful spouse. Uh, so, this is an HD, this is, hold on guys, let me check. This is the, uh, the HD 2000 uh, tar amps amplifier. I do warranty repair for tar amps. I, I love these guys. I love tar amps. They're good to me. I'm good to them. At least I think I am. <laughs> uh, they just have been fantastic to work with through the years. Um, everyone, a lot of other people will gripe and complain, uh, but I go, maybe I'm old. So this amplifier powers up, cycles through its LEDs, goes into protect. Uh, mo more often than not, uh, people will jump right to the conclusion that you probably have a bad output. But, mm, I measured these, of course, with my DMM digital multimeter and did not find any shorts that I'm aware of. Let me just double check. I don't want to give anyone bad information here. Uh, I am currently diagnosing this amplifier. Uh, before I get it submitted on TarWeb here. Yeah, see, so it's 10K. I think it's uh, 7,800. 7.8, yeah, 7.8, so it's uh, 10K and 7.8, so there's, yeah, 7.8, so there's no shorts in the output section. I know, guys, oddly enough, when I pulled this cover off, I told myself right off the bat, this board has been, something weird has happened with this board. This is not, this is not OEM thermal paste, but at the same time, the silicone, uh, let's just say this board has been out. I don't know the history of this amp. Um, it is in for warranty repair, so I'm diagnosing it for <laughs> warranty repair. Uh, but there's no shorts here, but it does go into protect. Uh, so if I get my old trusty scope here, let me, uh, let me show you guys this thing cycling through. Fan works. So I know the MCU is telling that to give it a go. I have a red LED. Um, I have no voltage, zero on my terminals. That was my first hint is everyone, anyone that knows these full bridge amps, you will have half rail voltage on your output terminals and I have nothing. So right off the bat, I knew I had no rail voltage. You can verify that over here through your rectifiers. Rectifiers, and I already checked and I made sure that I did not have any shorted rectifiers. Nope, and nope, and nope, and nope, no. So rectifiers are good. So that just leads me back to the, one of the most common failures of these boards. Uh, not, I shouldn't say these boards, this common failure of a part. This IC right here, let me check my camera, make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about here. This IC right there. This IC gets a drive signal from the MCU. And this IC drives your power supply transistor. Sorry, as I get out of massive focus there. So your uh, let me get my pointer so my thing doesn't get all confused. Here, power supply transistors are right here. This chip is responsible for creating your rail voltage. It drives these. These switch the, your 12 volts to ground, which pushes this transformer to do its job. I have no voltage here, so I have nothing pushing this transformer. I'm going to use terms lightly. I'm going to call it, say they're just pushing these transistors. Push this transformer, push pull, everyone say it. 
to make your voltage. So I don't have drive here. And what I do is I will just pulse the remote. You see my trusty alligator clip here. This is how simple this is. I'll pulse this remote while I'm checking my gate vias. This is a gate via for the transistors, gate drain source. Everyone should know the layout of their transistor. If you don't know, I would look into it because if you don't understand how a transistor works, it's hard to really understand how to fix these. Uh, but the gate, what I do is I look for drive at the gate. I have nothing. It is nothing. Nothing at the gate. Do I have drive from the MCU? Without shorting it out. I do have drive at the MCU. So these are your pull down resistors and you should find drive. And I do. I have drive at the pull down. So I get drive here, but I have no drive coming out. Do I have power? I do believe this IC failed. I don't have any power. So when this IC fails, this goes back to what we call a common IC failure. This is probably the, uh, what is this, the uh, 524, the 324, 27, 524, 324. It's going to be one of those. It could be the 2EDN, 27, um, But whatever it is, they fail. These things fail for some reason. I don't know why. They're driven too hard. Uh, I don't know, but when these fail, they'll pop the resistor that supplies 12 volts to it. And if you look down there close enough, let's see if I can get you guys down in there. Can you spot the resistor? Let me move the camera just a little bit here as if we get all too shaky. There it is. That resistor. Supplies 12 volts to your drive IC. Right? Do I have 12 volts there? Sure do. Do I have 12 volts coming out? Sure don't. Now, guys, don't go and just replace that resistor. There's a reason why that resistor is open. This is an open resistor. There's no, or it's a really, really high, high resistance value. There's no 12 volts coming out. Don't replace this, just that part, thinking that this amp's going to work again. You'll probably replace that, fire it up, burn the resistor up, and probably do more damage somewhere out here. If this is open, the IC has failed, period. Bottom line. Replace the IC. And I should also point out that, that the um, transistors themselves, you're probably not going to show any shorts between like the gate drain Yeah, yeah, the IC is completely shorted. This side right here, it's shorted right to ground. Oh, no, it's not. My bad. Charging the capacitors. Yeah, so there's no shorts here. That's what I was going to say. Usually you don't see any shorts in your transistors. The transistor did not cause the IC failure. Yeah. Yeah, sorry as I am probably completely out of focus on you guys here. Let me go the other way. There we go. That's a little bit better. But yeah, there's no shorts in these transistors. And I have mentioned the tarnets before too in the past. Like, I don't know why these ICs fail. Um, but this is what's causing the failure. This fails, pops this resistor. 
if you replace this IC, replace that resistor, these things you, you fire right back up. And then I never see the amp again, which is odd. Um, because my repair boards, I repaired, I couldn't tell you how many of these drive ICs I've replaced in the last several years. Hundreds. I've never seen the amp come back. So I don't know. I don't know if this is an OEM thing. Uh, maybe my additional solder that I use, you know, uh, adds acts as a heat sink to the pins. I'm not sure. But I do know they never come back. So... I'll get that replaced and that replaced and this amplifier will probably be good to go. So I thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm, I might re release videos here and there every now and then just depends how much time I have. Uh, so I thank you guys. If you have any uh, questions, comments, leave them down below. I'm here for you guys. Thanks for watching.